what about on that note, uh, are there influencers or mentors, if you like, that have helped shape you to the coach you are today? Yeah, absolutely. I think I'd straight away mentioned those two guys again, Maddie and Aris, um, sort of really early on. And then I think sort of as I went through the process of being a young coach and doing the internships and, and getting a couple of opportunities along the way, there's probably a couple of people. I think the first one that really sticks out to me, uh, I did my internship uh, cadetship with the Western Bulldogs men's program a couple of years ago. Uh, and there were two coaches there at the time. Um, obviously, a, a year-long cadetship is going to be a very large impact on your education and development as a coach, I'm sure. But um, Andy Barnett and, and Kelvin Philp at the time were, were amazing. And, and um, very contrasting in their, in their uh, systems and the way they sort of interacted with people and the way they thought about sort of strength and conditioning and sports science. But both were so amazing. What do you think are some common mistakes that uh, you know, athletes either make on themselves when they're sort of looking after their own strength and conditioning or, or perhaps coaches that are cutting their teeth at, at certain programs and, and you know, are commonly making um, that you've seen over time or, or perhaps you've made yourself that you've learned yeah. uh, from your mentors from? Yeah, I think um, like the first one for me that I think that people lose sight of just all the time and I think something that I'm pretty passionate about is the idea of having fun and enjoying the process and what you're doing. Like I just like it's so, so cliche. It's so simplistic, I know, but we're working with kids, working with 14 to 18, even 14 to 24, like young people, I think enjoying sport, having fun being able to go out and work really hard and get better, but, but enjoy doing that. It's, it's so important. So critical. And I think that's really easily forgotten. What about on yourself, mate? What are your favorite ways to, to develop your own skill set through, whether it be speaking to other practitioners, like you mentioned, Pelly, or um, you know, is it reading books, uh, journal articles, podcasts, take us through your, your favorite way to sort of absorb. Yeah. Your I think uh, as most young people these days, podcasts and, uh, like a online audio books are a, a go-to for me. Um, yeah, that's just so easy. You can be doing other things. I can be traveling, going to work or going to training and so forth. Um, but I think I probably, especially through uni, it was quite difficult to, like for me, it's like I really need to, to apply something myself. Um, and so what I sort of fell in love with, and, and I'm sure other coaches do this as well, but is, is learning something or hearing something or seeing something, uh, someone else do it. And taking that and applying it to either my own training or an athlete that I've worked with for an extended period of time who I trust and I can sort of go, I know their programming, I know what they're capable of, let me throw, a, you know, let me throw this change of direction drill at them and see how they respond. And what about from uh, elite training conditioning coaches, sports scientists that you've worked with, what, what did you learn from them that they prioritised in and then made sure that, you know, they were doing really well and, and perhaps things that surprised you that they, you know, either weren't a a part of their repertoire or, or skills that you thought might be relevant that actually weren't really used at, at, in elite sport? Yeah, I think um, it's probably two things that are super impressive at, at the higher level. And the first one is probably like flexibility and adaptability. Um, obviously things move, uh, particularly the last couple of years with COVID, but um, programs move, um, you know, athletes sort of scheduling changes, games, sort of either a harder or easier loading change things things are very very movable and and that, so those elite coaches ability to to adapt and still get the most out of what they want um is 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 pretty special and I what about um three books or, or documentaries podcast episodes if you like that uh for, for athletes or, or strength and conditioning high performance stuff that you think would be important to listen to or read to oh gosh this is a tough one for me um First one's probably uh, Atomic Habits. Um, I was actually at the Doggies and uh, Ben Walker, the SNC coach there, had, he was reading at the time and we, were, we spent a little bit of time talking about it. And so he recommended it to me and I sort of jumped on it and uh, gave it a read. And that was really, really good. So that one, that one's great. You know, that one's for coaches and staff alike. Uh, sorry, coaches and players and staff. Um, that's everyone involved because, you know, it, it's a little bit more to your life like how you change your life how you alter your life in a really positive direction and that just applies into training 